G'day, I'm Jib Smart, and this is 2007's Crisis. Crisis Remastered is hitting modern consoles and PC this year. Console controllers have come a long way since Crisis was on the Xbox 360. Let's look at how Crisis should play with modern controllers, and how you can try it out right now on your own PC. Crisis presents some unusual challenges, but we can work through them together. I'll be assuming you already know about gyro aiming and flick stick, perhaps from my other videos that describe them in more detail, and just want to get them working in Crisis. However, if you're a gyro aiming skeptic or you don't know what flick stick is, sit tight and I'll explain those in more detail later on in the video. As per usual, we'll use Joyshot Mapper, an open source program for mapping controller and gyro input to keyboard and mouse input. Joyshot Mapper lets you include your mouse sensitivity settings in your configurations so that these can be accounted for and real world values can be used for your gyro sensitivity and flick stick. This also means players can easily share their settings with each other. I'll include a link in the description below to my configuration settings for playing Crisis. You can play exactly the way I'm playing, with Flickstick correctly calibrated, just by copying my config and changing in-game sends to your mouse sensitivity setting in Crisis. But here's the first challenge Crisis presents. There's no number displayed next to the mouse sensitivity slider. But that's okay. Even if we can't see the number, it must be stored somewhere. Just go to Documents, My Games, Crisis, and open Game.cfg in Notepad. There's our mouse sensitivity right there. In your crisis settings for Joyshock Mapper, set in-game sends to whatever value you see here and then your flick stick will work the same as mine and your gyro sensitivity settings will be real world values. Don't forget if you change your mouse sensitivity to check this value again and update your config. That's the biggest obstacle out of the way, but there's more and for the next couple of changes we'll look to an article by Major Slack. I'll link this article below and I'll quickly walk you through why we're doing the suggested tweaks. First is making it so that crouch can be toggled instead of having to be held. I want to be able to tap the crouch button to toggle crouch or hold it to disable the gyro. See, any game with good gyro controls will give you a way to disable the gyro so you can reposition your controller. Just like how you'll lift your mouse off the mouse pad to reposition it so you always have space to turn. I like to map crouch and disable gyro to the east face button. That's circle on a DualShock 4 or A on switch controllers. That's easy enough to do in our Joyshock Mapper settings, but we also need to tell Crisis we want to toggle crouch rather than have to hold it. Just go to where the game is installed, for me it's Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Crisis, and create a file called system.cfg with these two lines in it. Or add those lines if you already have a system.cfg. Now you can toggle crouch instead of having to hold the crouch button. Lastly, we have the suit modes. Your nano suit lets you switch between different modes to help with different styles of play. Get around quickly with speed, Steady your aim or jump over obstacles with strength. Hide from your enemies with cloak. While armor is kind of the default mode, letting you take more hits before dying. The game lets you access these modes by holding a button and moving the mouse, or in this case the gyro, to switch between them. Like the weapon wheel in Doom or Shadow Warrior, I find this slow and clunky. Even as you get used to which direction corresponds to which suit mode, it's cumbersome to quickly switch from using the mouse or gyro for camera control to suit mode selection. The game lets you enable some shortcuts by double tapping different regular actions. For example, double tap sprint for speed or double tap jump for strength. I find these clunky too. Much of the time when I want strength it's to steady my aim or throw a chicken rather than to jump. So let's take some more of Major Slack's advice and set up some dedicated keys for each of the suit modes. And then we can access these with the controller through Joyshock Mapper. Back in Documents, My Games, Crisis, Profiles, Default, you'll find actionmaps.xml. This includes all your key bindings. They have different bindings for when you're in a vehicle to when you're running around, so find the section we want by searching for action map name equals player, as shown here. Right below that, we'll add these lines to map cloak, speed, strength, and armor modes to 7, 8, 9, and 0, respectively. Make sure you enter these correctly. If there's anything wrong, like a missing slash, the game won't start. Back to our Joyshock Mapper configuration, and we already have very few buttons available to us we'd be hard pressed to dedicate a button to each suit mode. So instead of having a button bring up a wheel of suit mode options to choose between with the gyro, ZR in my case since I like to use R to shoot, we have that button change some of our other mappings while it's held. Here I have ZR and West for strength mode, ZR North for speed, and ZR East for cloak. Since armor mode kind of works as the default, letting you recharge energy as long as you're not taking damage, I actually have ZR activate armor mode as well as enabling these shortcuts. This makes it super easy to switch between speed, strength, cloak and armor modes without breaking the flow of the game. I found it really easy to pick up. 
It might not seem like a drastic difference to the weapon wheel style selection that's normal, but the touch of a button gives much more immediate feedback than a mouse or stick movement, and having the different modes be distinct buttons is helpful for separating them. I found this super helpful for quickly choosing between weapons in Fortnite, and it generalizes to any game with few enough options to choose between. See the Joyshock Mapper 1.4 update video for more info on how my Fortnite config handles 5 weapon slots and 5 build slots. Of course, the way I have it working here in Crisis skips a layer of visual feedback that can be helpful for new players. If I were a developer on Crisis itself, I'd explore combining the two options. We can still bring up the same icons when the mode selection button is pressed. Players can see the options available to them and think about what they want to do. But instead of relying on stick, mouse or gyro directions, we label each option with the appropriate button. There's no reason we couldn't allow both analog stick selection and button selection at the same time, but I'd encourage dropping the analog selection entirely in favour of button selection so that players still have camera control while doing this. In the settings we can add options to disable or delay showing the suit modes so that quick players can switch between modes without obscuring their view. Finally, add the option to switch to armour mode when the mode selection button is tapped and released relatively quickly without another suit mode shortcut being pressed. Perhaps the timing on that could be tied to a delay on showing the suit mode selection UI. With that all in place, suit mode selection would be much quicker, like with my configuration I've set up with Joyshock Mapper, while still preserving the new player friendliness of on-screen prompts. But that's all theoretical. An idea is only proven by good implementation. And that's the purpose of Joyshock Mapper. While I can't use it to modify a game's UI, that'll be for the developers to explore, I can use it to try gyro controls that are better than any I've seen in a published game. I can use it to add flickstick to any game with camera controls like this one. And if Crisis is this good with Joyshock Mapper, Crisis Remastered could be even better without. But let's manage our expectations. Typically, as we see cross-platform shooters on modern consoles, we see mediocre gyro aiming on the Switch version and none on the PS4 version. Games treat the DualShock 4 like it's just an Xbox controller. But PlayStation's DualShock 4 can do so much more than an Xbox controller, and that should be reflected in its games. And even Switch controllers are capable of more than we're seeing, even in celebrated games like Splatoon 2. For the first time on this channel, I've been playing with Joy-Cons separated, and it's been interesting. All the aiming is done with the right Joy-Con, the right gyro and the right stick. It's much like aiming with a Wiimote, although aiming is relative rather than absolute, and that brings a lot of advantages with it. My effective range of movement isn't limited to the size of the screen, and not having to point directly at the screen means I can sit more comfortably. It also means I have more freedom to customise my sensitivity for stable input. However, as much as some like playing with split Joy-Cons, I find my accuracy and stability are so much better two-handed. I'd rather play with my controllers together in the Joy-Con grip, or even better, with the Switch Pro Controller or PlayStation's DualShock 4, there's no good reason PS4 players should be missing out on this kind of play. So when it comes to Crisis Remastered, I'm expecting kinda okay gyro in the Switch version and none at all in the PS4 version. But we can hope for better, right? But if you're a developer, you have everything you need to do better right here. Check out GyroWiki for resources on implementing really good gyro controls, or check out other videos on this channel for more examples. It's a simple matter to convert the controller's angular velocity in two axes as detected by its gyro to mouse-like camera control. There are some options that are really helpful to provide and some common mistakes that should be avoided. GyroWiki gives you a fairly comprehensive look at what should be considered standard and conventional when playing with gyro. Check it out implement it in your game, and then build from there. On top of that, we have flick stick. With gyro handling all the precision aiming, as well as all vertical aiming, the right stick can be repurposed to give the player direct control over their bearing. Tilting the stick in any direction prompts a quick camera flick to face that relative direction. For example, getting shot at from the back right, pull your stick to the back right and you'll flick to face that direction. When the stick's already tilted, you can rotate it to make further adjustments. It's great for watching corners, scanning your surroundings, or following a circling enemy. There are plenty more examples of that on this channel, in games like Counter-Strike, Halo, and more. There's also an in-depth developer tutorial on GyroWiki, so check that out at the link in the description. On this channel, I explore different ways to play games, with an emphasis for the moment on gyro aiming and flick stick while these are still neglected in modern games. There's so much space to explore better ways to play, and I hope you'll watch this space for more in future. Subscribing is a great way to make sure you don't miss anything. Let me know if you have other ideas on how to play Crisis or if there are other games you'd like to see played with gyro aiming, flick stick, or anything else. Or, let's continue the conversation in the Gyro Gaming Discord, linked below. Thanks for watching, and let's change how games are played.